Yeah. You got it? Yeah. So, yeah, let's start this one. This is an interesting talk. By interesting, I mean, like, I want to talk about something, but really what I want to do is just sit and go, like, hey, guys, Majora's Mask, that is a game. <laughs> <laughs> like, just keep doing that for a while. Uh, that's not really a good talk. I mean, I guess it is. <laughs> you talk to me. I would love to do that, but you guys would just be like, okay, we get it. And half of you would be like, what are you talking about? Like, I haven't played this game. Let's go ahead and gush. Um, let's go ahead and gush. No, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So, takeaway and theme. I, I really want to talk about takeaway, but it's how theme affects that. And this is an example of how theme doesn't really affect takeaway, or a game that doesn't really have takeaway. So when I say takeaway, I kind of mean like the kind of game that you'll play, and afterwards, you'll kind of sit there and go, whoa. Like, what did I just, man, the implications of what just happened. And the game is over now, and I'm like growing as a person because of this. That's the kind of game I'm talking about. I don't say, oh, said it's crap. Um, so, this is FTL. It's a really fun game if you haven't played it. It's a roguelike space ship organizing game. Uh, it's basically like not really plot oriented, though. That's, that's kind of the point of it, is that you start at this side of the galaxy, and it's a randomly generated map to get to this side of the galaxy where you defend the, oh god, the Federation from the rebel fleet. That's it, it's not really complicated, but it's super, super fun and really hard. Uh, <laughs> the hardness is kind of part of the fun, but no, it's such a good game, it has such a great enveloping theme of like space and mystery. The music is amazing, but after you beat this game, you're not gonna like go, whoa, what just happened? Like, I defeated the rebels. What does that imply for this universe? <laughs> no, because it, it doesn't matter. Like, it really doesn't. Um, and the same can be said for like almost any strategy game or like Civ. You're not gonna be the game of Civ and learn something about yourself unless you're like, I'm so tired of winning like by killing everyone. <laughs> it takes too long. Maybe war is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> It takes too long, that's why. <laughs> because it takes too long. Well, you can learn what you value. Mm -hmm. You can learn what you value. That, that's very true, but I, I'm kind of talking about this as in something that they're like right. trying to convey okay. you to take okay. away. So Shelter, this is the game that I was talking about before with the Badgers. Oh, man. This game does some things really, really well and then other things not so well. Um, but the point of Shelter is like, you are this mother badger. And you have five baby batters, so you got like chasing you around and stuff. So you're not happy with the door situation? I thought I saw somebody by the door. Oh, okay. Um, did they think we were close? Sounds good. So you have to take care of these baby batters, and the, the theme behind this game is kind of like survival. I guess that's the predominant one, is that you really need to keep your kids alive. And it's kind of a great way of conveying that, because, I don't know, in a game like Zelda, when you lose hearts, you're just kind of like, all right, let's not lose more hearts, and let's kill this guy, and go get my hearts back. Whereas with this, if you lose a kid, you're not just gonna like have another kid. Your kid is gone for the rest of the game. Having that kind of tangible like, life system is really, really impactful, especially when you're like confused and lost, and your kids run off in a direction, and you hear like a really loud yelp, and then four of them come back to you, and you're like, where'd the fifth one go? what happened, and he's gone for the rest of the game. It's haunting. It's, I don't know, it's amazing. And that kind of survival is conveyed so well through this game. The ending was kind of And it, at points it just really felt like a game. And I, that's a weird thing to say with saying this is a game and I want it to be less like a game, but I really do. I think this game would be so much more fun if it didn't feel mechanic -y. Because there are points when you're like in patches of grass, and birds are flying overhead, and you can see their shadow, and you have to cross from patch to patch, but if you get out of a patch of grass, they will swoop down and try to eat your children for you. And at that point, it's just kind of like, oh, I'm playing this game now. Like, I'm doing the jump from thing to thing without getting caught thing now, like doing the covert ops, as opposed to like, I, I want to feel like a badger. I don't know. I guess maybe it's too much, but I think that's kind of going in the right direction. Yeah, there's the bird. Is a jerk. <laughs> Gone home, dude. I love this game. This game is so good. It's like two ish hours, two and a half, two, three. Um, and the point of this game is that this is your family. I think that's you, actually. 
and you have gone away on this trip to Europe somewhere, and you've come back to this new house that you're not used to because your family moved while you were gone, and no one's there. And you're basically trying to discover from that point what's going on. And so there's this really good theme of like exploration and discovery, uh, and it's conveyed so well throughout this game. Just because like almost anything that you can find, you can pick up and you can look at, and it's like really detailed. It just it feels so right, and you discover a lot of stuff. Like you're just exploring this one house, but it feels so much larger than that because every single inch of it is covered with like some kind of note of that explains what happened or some kind of hint or something like that. And it's it's not even like you're trying to solve anything per se. It's you find something and you're like, oh, this tells me like a little bit more about the story and where I might find more of the rest of the story or something like that. Yeah, this, this talk is a little, yeah, and, and now the Majora's Mask part begins. <laughs> uh, so this is the more important part of the talk. So that was kind of like getting into it. Um, so Majora's Mask, in one way you can kind of look at it like the transition from Ocarina to Majora's Mask. Just a show of hands, like who has played Ocarina of Time? No? No! <laughs> no! no! Uh, okay. And who's played Majora's Mask? Probably fewer. Okay, one less. I don't think many people have beaten <laughs> Well, I have beaten both. So I'll be the, the <laughs> resource on that. So you can kind of look at it as a transition from one to the other, where People look at Majora's Mask like a sequel, but it's a little different because Ocarina of Time has young Link, 17-year-old Link, and then Majora's Mask has like 10, 11-year-old Link. It's just like, what? Okay. So at one point you can kind of say, okay, well it's turning Skull Kid from this little derpy dude in the forest with, that throws rocks at you to this derpy dude in the forest that throws very, very large rocks at you, uh, <laughs> like the moon. <laughs> um, and you kind of discover how that kind of transitions from one guy to the other. But you can also look at this as how Link becomes his adult self. Um, if you really look at it, I feel like Ocarina of Time isn't about Link growing up, it's about watching other people grow up. Whereas Majora's Mask is more about seeing how Link himself grows up. I think that's super cool. So the themes of this game, uh, I guess I'll skip around a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, are kind of like identity, friendship, and sacrifice. I guess that's those are the three categories I throw them into. The gif is flashing. I know, it's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, I saw that in Google Images. Like, I have to. <laughs> okay. I have to put this in. Okay. <laughs> right. Friendship. It's the largest. It's oh, important. God. <laughs> so, just a kind of way to look at this transition. Oh. Duh. Can't click on that. You have to I can click on this stuff. Okay, so the first song in Ocarina depends on who you ask. But what do you mean that's like the window? Volume? Oh my god. So loud. Sounds good. Okay, so that's sort of the first song. You don't necessarily learn this is the first song, but this is like happy, right? I would, I would wager to say that this is a happy song. Oh god, I don't even know where the mouse is. You mean I'm close to the title theme? Huh? The title theme. The title theme? And then the menu theme. Sort of. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of more talking about like the songs that you would learn in the game. That's the first gameplay song on loop. Oh, right, uh, right. And this is the actual song you learn on the Ocarina. This is kind of like, I wouldn't say it's sad. It's somber? It, yeah, it's somber. It's like, but it's still kind of happy and uplifting a little bit in the sense it's like you're calm. But it's pretty. It's serene. It's hopeful. Definitely. Whereas you transition to this. So this is the first song that you learn to play in the Doors Mask, I hope. Yes. I hope. So this was in Ocarina, that's right. But it's definitely like there are parts of it that are kind of darker and there are parts of it that are a little lighter. And that's that's cool. And then you get to stuff like this. <sighs> this video is insane. I don't know why people do this. They're like, yeah, 10 hours of this song on YouTube, because <laughs> that's what you wanted. This is nothing like those first two. 
Like, this is way darker. And this is, like, the first thing that you encounter in this game. And it's just the most, like, dense, feeliest song. <laughs> oh, man, you're really so great. Is that a technical term? <laughs> when that first happened, I had kind of a suspicion that maybe it was a green sequence, because the whole thing, the yeah. whole introduction to the game is designed to be really surreal. It, it is very surreal, and it's kind of... I think this is a great. I guess I'll just leave this on and see where that takes <laughs> the <laughs> depressive the spiral. Uh, so, coming back to these things, we can see these themes are sort of, sort of coming up. Sacrifice you can definitely see in that shift in music, but identity and friendship kind of come more into play with the idea of the mask. I like this game. Sorry. <laughs> This, all of this stuff, like I see this and I'm just like thinking of more things and I'm like, I should talk about that too. Let's do this. So with identity, Majora's Mask obviously has masks in it. Um, and it, it's a lot more focused on masks than in Ocarina of Time. So Ocarina of Time did have masks. They didn't really do anything. Um, they were specifically for selling to people who would like those masks. Uh, and you can see Skull Kid still has a taste for the weird kind of dark masks. He wore a skull and now he's wearing this creepy face thing. Um, but you can look at the idea of masks as more of a literary theme as opposed to just this surface level, oh, he's wearing a mask. So you can kind of say, like, well, what does the mask say about you? Does it tell you who you identify with? Or, like, what's actually within you at the time? Uh, like, who you want to be? Or is it what controls you? Because if you think about it as what controls you, well, that's sort of what the game on a surface level is saying. It's like, well, Skull Kid put on this mask and now he's this douchebag and lost his <laughs> friends uh, and tries to destroy the world. But if you look at the way that Link interacts with masks, man, this music is awesome. Uh, it's just like <laughs> bringing all of this out. If you look at the way that Link interacts with the masks, you can kind of look at it as saying that Link is kind of gaining these personas as he interacts with people like it, yeah it's it's sort of hard to explain but as he as he makes friends with people he gains a persona or a mask and he gains the ability to kind of turn that persona on whenever he feels like it and obviously it's not quite that abstract because he physically does turn into these things like the bomb face you can't explain that as in like he turns into an explosive personality no his face explodes and like blows rocks up. but but i think on a on a higher or lower level whichever way you want to look at it i think that's kind of what the idea of mask was supposed to be about is whenever you do something to help someone and you act in a certain way they give you an appropriate mask and it's it's kind of reflecting who Link is as a person. And this is a fun question. If someone's a friend of your mask, are they also a friend of yours? Like, if you're doing this persona, is it you that they're a friend of? Or is it the person you're pretending to be at the time? Or is that person also you? Yeah, because uh, people treat you really differently when you talk to them depending on the mask you're wearing. Right, yeah. definitely. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> this is really creepy, but I think it's such a fantastic way of doing this. So. Continuing on this, the Elegy of Emptiness is a song you can learn in the game. Uh, it's toward the end, it's basically used for the fourth temple. Um, that's the last one. And what it does is you play the song, and a statue is placed where you're standing of whoever you are at the time. And so, just, just a little bit more background. You start out the game as Young Link. You chase uh, this douchebag who stole your horse. Yeah, which is Skull Kid. Um, and then you chase him into this, basically a trap, and then he turns you into this little dirt, uh, but as you. And so you're still dressed like yourself, you're just a Deku and you can't do anything, you're defenseless and scared and crap. Then you get out and you somehow are relieved of your Deku-ness by that masked salesman. And then you kind of go around and you realize that these two guys, when you turn into a Garn and a Zura, you actually do that because you're wearing a dead person's face. Uh, that's about as bluntly as it can be put. But it's really what's happening. Is like you find his mask on his grave and you put it on, you turn into him. But you don't turn into him, you turn into a link version of him. 
And the same with Mikal, the Zora guy. He washes up dead on shore. Like, you were holding his body at the time. It just gets more and more close to the fact that you're holding dead people. <laughs> um, it's like, here, it's just kind of like, what? That has nothing to do with dead people. And then you see this, and it's like, oh, I'm at his tombstone. He died a long time ago, though. This is just like, his corpse washes up on the shore. <laughs> he disintegrates, and you put on his face. That, that is seriously the series of events. And so, you I really think I, look at this. I think I can guess how Bomb Face died. <laughs> how Bomb Face died. <laughs> right, right. So, if you look at this, an elegy, like, what is an elegy? Uh, it's, a speech to a, it's somebody. What you remember someone by. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's something lamenting the dead. It can be like a poem or a speech or a song or something like that. But it, it's lamenting the dead. So if you look at this, it's kind of like saying that these are people who have died at some point, and you're like honoring them almost by making this statue. So this doesn't quite make sense with what we know so far about how we got these two guys. So one, with the Deku, you didn't see anyone die. Um, you don't know that he's dead, but someone totally did die. And you can pick this up um, because there's a point in the game where there's this butler and you're chasing him to get a mask. And at the end, if you do it as him, which is easiest to do because there's water and you can just skip over as a Deku, he'll be like, you know what, you remind me a lot of my son. And at the end of the game, there'll be a point where there's this warped tree that you saw at the very beginning right after you got turned into that guy that's dead and stuck in the ground, and the butler is sitting there, like, weeping at his grave. And so it's like, oh. So maybe, like, all of this is tied to something being dead or something very dark happening or being sacrificed. And then you look at this guy. <laughs> so first you look at him and you say, that's really creepy, why did they do that? <laughs> um, so the reason they did that, I want to say it's twofold. The obvious one that people will always say is just like, oh, well, that's me and his face. Like, that's, seriously, that's what it is. They put his face on him for some reason. I don't know why they were seriously compelled to do that. It's really creepy, though. <laughs> uh, but the second thing is, that's weird. Because whenever Link is dressed up as the Link version of something, it displays the actual version of it as the statue. So is that Link? Like, is the Link that you're seeing not actually Link? And it's really Miyamoto. <laughs> well, not Miyamoto. <laughs> I mean, if, if you look at it like he's trying to be these people, or trying to be, like, aspire to be these people, or it's what, what he values at the time, then it's kind of like, is Link not really Link? Is Link like aspiring to be this other person that he doesn't feel like he really is? Yeah. Can't say that with this music, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> well, this is, are, I'm I'm glad I decided to let this be play. Feel. There are multiple. Ways. I think that's so fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's one of my favorite examples of this. So childishness. This is a quote from everywhere. I don't. I seriously have no idea who came up with it, but. What's the gist? It talks about the final boss in Majora, and, I'm, and I say this not spoiling anything, because honestly, it's a Zelda game. Like, there are some things that you know going into a Zelda game, that's one. I mean, like, one of them is that you know who the final boss is within, like, a few minutes of playing the game, or something like that. You have a general idea. And then the other one is that the final boss is going to have more than one form. Get used to it. It's a Zelda game. So, this, the final boss, Majora, the person that is doing all of this stuff has three forms, and it talks about its three forms in, with respect to the idea that Majora is really just this child. And the first form is just a mask floating around. It's like, yeah, it's a facade to hide the self. And then the child's incarnation is this really creepy, like, really long armed, long leg, lanky dude that's freaking hyper and runs like crazy around the room. And he's saying that that's like living for the joys of playtime. And then the rat, which is equally as disturbing for other reasons, um, has these two really long whips. And it says these two monstrous tentacle-like whips, perfect for grabbing hold of something and never letting go. And it's kind of like, yeah, that's, I don't know. Looking at that, you can say, oh, the boss is just the boss and it's trying to be scary and penultimate and intimidating and stuff. And then on another level, you can kind of say, well, this boss is something more than that? Like it's. Majora has more depth than just being this guy who's trying to bring it out of him. 
Like he's doing it for a reason, and that's maybe why Skullkid acted the way that he did. That's for sure. Wrath, that is terrifying. Like God. seriously, for an N sixty four game. <laughs> no, for now that's it's, yeah, it's it's pretty freaky. It's so uh, yeah, friendship. <laughs> so I I think the 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 way that they did the game, a lot of people hated the idea that it was like three days or whatever, and you you had to do it within that time frame, and then everything started over. Well. The game is kind of about making friends because of that, though. Because every single thing you do, it's like you're doing it for the first time. Like, you have to make friends with everyone all over again. And so, that that's one of the ways that they really tie the gameplay into this theme of friendship, is that everything you do, it's like you do it to make friends, almost. Um, and it could be one directional. So these guys were, uh, are, I don't know, friends of Skullkid. I want to explain their purpose in the story, but it's really beautiful, uh, extremely touching. And you notice that for a while when Skullkid is being this douchebag, that he's not really giving back in the friendship, but he's like insanely touched by the fact that they were still friends with him uh, afterward. Yeah. So up to you to maintain, up to you to maintain. That's kind of another part of the end is the happy mass salesman. It's like whenever there's a meeting, like a parting is sure to follow. But however long that party lasts is pretty much entirely up to you. And I think that's that's one of the things that's like not only you learn, but like the characters learn, like Link and Skullkid both sort of learn at that moment. It's really pretty. Uh, they don't have borders. This is interesting. I think the game is super cool in the sense that it makes friends between people who would never have been friends before. For instance, all the dead people that Link is. Like, there's a part of the game where you can actually play in a band of just yourself. Um, and so you're being Link, Goron Link, Zora Link, and Deku Link. And they're all playing in a band and they're like coming together to create this music. And it's something that never would have happened if you hadn't like brought them together in this way. It's really pretty. And the new A Bossa Nova is just cool. So, oh, and can be seen from all angles. What was I meaning with that? Out <laughs> of three can days. Can I spit four cardinal directions with the worlds? No. That might That's be a good way to look at it, though. So what I was meaning by that is that because it resets after three days, you can not only see what it's like to become their friend, but you can see what happens when you don't become their friend. And so you can kind of experience, like, well, which is more worth it? Like, where should I spend my time becoming this person's friend or this person's friend? Or, like, is it worth it to let them go crash in the ditch and be horribly disfigured? Maybe. <laughs> Death and Sacrifice, constant reminder of doom. Ooh, this one I have to bring over, because it's just horrible. Oh god, what else? I'm gonna make fun like <laughs> Do this, pause. See, that's 10 hours of the song of healing, by the way. Screen. This isn't a spoiler, this is what happens whenever you take school. It's just, what happens? You can have it happen as many times as you want. <laughs> if you seriously want to watch this. But I, I really wanted to bring this to focus is because like this is like a minute something long cutscene. Whenever you lose the game, it's just horribly traumatizing. The moon is crashing into this town and destroying everything. And then that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it gets so much worse though. And then this. And then this. Just Link standing there like, huh, what's going on? Uh-oh. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> like what in the world? It's like the darkest game almost seems like some kind of Hiroshima imagery, you know? Yeah, that's you've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? That's what the happy mask salesman says when he finds you in the deck. That's <coughs> so traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> that is really traumatizing. That's just like, holy crap, and you're faced with this. Like, you're faced with this as this, like, 11 whatever year old kid having to face this idea that if you mess up, the world is gone. Like, you will die in this fiery wave or whatever. Like, everything is going down. Um, talk about the butler's son. 
and talk about the LG of emptiness. But I guess the, the point in listing those is like, these things all really like tie together, which is why they're really nice. Or not, oh, yep, there we go. And just to be sure that I'm not like the English teacher saying the balloon is red because they're passionate and <laughs> angry and the fury is rising within them, as opposed to the author just being like, no, I, just, I need to <laughs> color it. <laughs> it the balloon. Um, this is stuff that happens when you're talking to these certain kids within the game. They actually say stuff that hints at these kinds of things. Like, I wonder if like these people that you think are friends, if they're friends with you, or um, does whatever you choose to make you happy make everyone else happy? Um, let's see, where are the other ones? If you do the right thing, does it make everyone happy? And I wonder if the face under the mask is your true face, which is kind of getting back to the like, is Link actually Link? I don't know. I think it's really nice and powerful. And maybe you'll do something. Okay, so coming back to just cultivating takeaway. Like, why do you take this much away from this game? Um, I think one of the reasons is just it has really strong themes. Um, and they're simple, right? They're just relatable, strong, and simple themes. Friendship, like death, sacrifice. What was the other one? Identity. Identity, yeah. Like, that's, that's something pretty much everyone has to come to terms with at some point in their lives. Um, <coughs> and I say top down or bottom up in the sense that I know people are always like, you should design a game, like, basically saying that we want this game to be based on, I don't know. I, there are so many ways of putting this, but a lot of people think that a game should be done a certain way. Like, you should focus on some things first and then add this other extraneous crap into it just because this is really what your game is. This is what you should be focusing on. But I think if you just choose a theme or you choose some kind of story that you want to convey, I think it's just as valid to take that and build a game down from it and kind of say, oh, this is where the game comes into play. Um, yeah. Exploring interactions. That's interactions between themes. Like, not just with the player, but Again, like all of these themes kind of tied together. They didn't just arbitrarily choose three and they're just like, all right, throw these into the same game. They said, oh, okay, we'll choose these three, but these three actually work well together and you can learn something by looking at how these themes interact. Subtlety, again, none of this is spelled out for you. I'm just like bringing stuff to light about this game, but they don't, they don't explicitly tell you these things. It's just something you kind of have to look at and say, oh, that's pretty, or I should learn something from this. Agency and theme. Um, so that's kind of saying that you should not just be watching a movie. Like, this is a game, right? You should be interacting with it and seeing how that happens based on how you interact with it. So if you look at the Bioshocks, the very first one, the agency is really, really tied to the theme, like really well, just because when the reveal happens, you realize, oh, hey, like, I was with the theme all along. Like, this is what the theme is. And this is exactly what's been happening. Whereas with Bioshock Infinite, your agency in the theme doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, you're doing stuff, but you don't have any motivation to do this thing. Whereas the first Bioshock actually explained why you did. Um, you're just kind of arbitrarily doing stuff and violently massacring people and just because because you want to play the game, I guess. Um, and Ocarina of Time. So I guess, how did it change from that? Like, was, was the theme in Ocarina of Time different? Was it worse? Maybe? Is this a rhetorical question? <laughs> no, not really. Like, what was the theme in Ocarina of Time? Adventure came to save Hyrule. Adventure is probably the theme. Yeah, so there, there was a lot of, in order for of time, there was a lot of introducing new things. So right. Zora, that's, that's kind of really became a thing. It didn't, that didn't, didn't really develop in Majora's Mask. That developed into that, you know, Ocarina of Time. They took the Zora in a very new direction. And right. Then, and then the Gorons, they just made up for Ocarina of Time. And so there was this real sense of discovery of, like, every time you go somewhere, you're like, I'm going to go on this really long path, and you know, all these arduous perils will be in the way, and then I'll end up somewhere, and it'll be this thing I've never seen before, and I have no idea what it's going to be. Uh, yeah. there, there's someone that, uh, I forget 
what the exact phrase is, but Ocarina of Time is often referred to as like this showroom of, of just new stuff, um, not just in new things that they came up with, but like technologically as well. Like everyone loved this game. They're like, it looks miraculous. It's like, it's the best looking game I've ever seen. Like the Z targeting system is revolutionary. Like all of this stuff that we take for granted now is they were just shoving into this game. Like all of this great new stuff. Here it is everyone. <laughs> and so I think that almost took away from it. Um, not in the sense of discovery, but in the sense that there's so much new stuff that they're framing to this game, it's almost less about the game than it is about all of this new stuff. Kind of like Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, like, they, I feel like Avatar spent more time trying to be more revolutionary than doing its job of a movie and telling a good story. <laughs> Possible. I mean, I, I still love it. But then there was that time. guy in the snow place, and he like shouted, and he was singing, right? And he was like, oh, right? What? <laughs> like the, the cold place? It was like a kind of, you know, really strong voice. It was like snowy. Oh, it, you mean the, the game, game, mask? game camera? No, no. no. The Avatar. So they, <coughs> there was a scene where they were traveling to like all the neighboring tribes. Yeah. Oh. And now they, Brandon's scene in that film, like, oh, like oh, they remembered that I don't. Oh, <laughs> this guy had like a really strong voice, but he's great. I'm making a joke, I don't remember what he's talking about. It's like basically it's like apparently their tribe had never invented a horn, so when they wanted to get some attention, it was like, it was kind of like yodeling, but oh, I sounded see. less wimpy. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's sort of it. Like I guess I wanted to look at it in the sense of did Ocarina of Time have the same kind of takeaway factor that Majora seems to? For those who beat it. Or got close. Like the themes just like are something that you need to think about afterward. It feels like in a lot of games, over enough time fits into the category of sort of like Mario games almost, where you beat the game and the accomplishment is beating the game. It's not like, oh Bowser was actually like troubled <laughs> as a child. <laughs> like all of this new Come stuff on that you're Bowser on the inside. Right. Yeah. Uh, I thought the theme was straightforward uh, good versus evil since and when you go through the time or you, you take out the sword you get to see all what happens when evil runs rampant like all the people suffering and that was your job so, like in that in Majora's Mask you stop the moon you see how bad that ends up if it crashes down in there if evil runs rampant so I think yeah. the thing to take away from that is that yeah so this the theme is simple and the theme is strong um, but it's definitely not so uh, like with Ocarina of Time, they just like throw in your face. They're just like, yep, all of this stuff, evil, bad things. This guy's the bad one. Look at him. <laughs> I think you can also uh, make a distinction between theme and like motivation, where you can have a very clear good versus evil motivation, but then you still have a choice of there are many, many themes that you can explore with that motivation. So, you know, they, they relate, but I feel like you can kind of argue that in a way they're separate, and you can decide separately, like, what your theming is and what your motivation is, and if they'll work together. Mm -hmm. Like, I definitely think friendship is a strong theme in Ocarina of Time, but it's definitely in a different respect than Majora's Mask. Like, they, they sort of share some boundaries, they just take it in different ways. Just because in Ocarina of Time, all of your friends end up just like leave you yeah. <laughs> and you, you have to deal with that parting but they're still your friends I thought it's, it's kind of like Majora's Mask is more about people and like how and how things affect the people and yes. Ocarina of Time I don't know whenever I play that game I just really don't care about the people at all like arguably it, when Ganon takes over the world it's arguably better because there aren't any enemies in Hyrule Field <laughs> it's more like it, it, it's more like uh, it is kind of more like good versus evil, or just like making just like the world not bad. It's, it doesn't focus on like individual people; it's just like generally making things good. Yeah, I think the fact that the game starts over so often really brings out the idea that these people are like have complicated, intricate lives that don't revolve around you. Like 
These, these people are going to do something no matter what, and you can see what happens if you're in their life when that happens, or if you're not. But it's still going to happen, whereas with Ocarina of Time, pretty much everyone is just waiting for you to do something with them. And the second <laughs> you did the thing that they're expecting you to do, they leave, or they go do something else. Like, yeah, good job, Link, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, thanks. I think what Korean of Time does have in there, you know, like how strong of an adventure experience it gives mm -hmm. the, like, I don't know, like, when I played it, I feel like, like using the slingshots, using the arrows, and using, was it, the chain, the hook shot, the hook shot to, like, go around. That was, like, really cool because you definitely feel like you're traversing all of these dungeons and do, figuring out creative ways to take on the challenges that the world has to offer. Um, and I think that was stronger in our period of time than it is in uh, Majora's Mask. When, tra when traversing the dungeons in Majora's Mask, it feels more like that the dungeons are just there because you have to solve some kind of puzzle. It's like the standard fare of adventure games. Whereas the story is the more important component majority of us in maybe the field. So like, I guess to summarize, I think what kind of time is more focused on the experience, whereas um, majority of mass is almost like kind of literary-ish themes. Yeah. yeah, so I think what I would say about that is go back to the very beginning and say like, you can still have like a really good game without having something that you like take away from it and wonder about it and like grow from. But yeah, it, it, it just means that you won't have that extra thing. And maybe it's better or maybe it's worse off. But I mean, I, I would say Ocarina of Time is probably better off for that just because I wouldn't want to play the same Zelda game over and over again. <laughs> they just made Majora's Mask after Majora's Mask after Majora's Mask. I'd probably get pretty tired of Majora's Mask. Um, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> when they start releasing remakes. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, a remaster of the game. Yeah, we'll see. Ocarina of Time's on the 3DS? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like they're skipping over the draws mask like the same. Yeah. Remake Link will be. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's true. The draws mask didn't as well. Yeah. I'm sure there are tons and tons of people who want it now. There is a fan made trailer yeah. of like an HD. Yeah, I saw it. It's really? it's less exciting than the fan made trailers of the other things like that, just because it only has like it has a happy mass salesman and a Deku kid. And that's it. And just like it's dramatic camera angles around these two or three figures. Yeah, it's <laughs> so cool. <laughs> the Jurassic Mask is kind of creepy and scary almost because of how low the resolution of N sixty four is. Mm -hmm. You see these like pixelated images of like kind of lost yeah. inside. Well, really creepy. Well, that's another the thing they about made it HD. You can lose that factor. Well, <coughs> horror games in general, well, any sort of horror, I feel is better on limited technology. Because nowadays, I don't find I'm a big horror kind of like monster scary things, but like older scary things were scarier because you didn't exactly know what it was, which let your imagination kick in, which made the already scary experience just like totally just like heart stopping but now that games are more clear in HD there's not because you know what's trying to kill you yeah. you're like oh he is obviously some sort of reincarnated mummy man <laughs> so I think that's that's kind of a accidental thing that happened yeah like they didn't really intend for those games to be as scary as they were they just kind of didn't have a choice um, whereas now I don't think they're forced to be less scary I think they're completely capable of being equally as terrifying, but it's just harder to justify it now. I mean, Amnesia uses fog well to kind of oh, totally. do that. Totally. Whereas Silent Hill had to use fog, because if they didn't, you couldn't render anything. <laughs> so this is an example of uh, shifting theming, and I don't know, maybe you could inspire you guys, because it's a mod, so. A lot. It may, yeah, so maybe it could inspire. Actually, it's a texture. Oh, God, I saw this. <laughs> maybe it could inspire people. 
The fuck is a <laughs> This is the worst. <laughs> like, I saw so many screenshots of this when I was looking for, like, pictures to put in this slideshow. And they're all him. Oh my god. Oh, oh god. No. Oh, oh, man god. drowned. Uh, why? Every single person. Every face and many things that are not faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The whole thing is like 15 minutes, so I wouldn't recommend watching the entire thing. Oh, okay. But you, you, if you're watching the whole thing, that's the horse that's chasing. Oh. Yeah, the horse has, um, you can see his mouth in his eyes. So I think this, I think this really changes the theme. Because it kind of like <laughs> if your face is one person but all of your masks are also the same person, what does it mean <laughs> Famous <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage will rip his soul out. That's right out of the Uncanny Valley, that horse's face. <laughs> oh, oh my god, no! <laughs> <laughs> so now you're overcoming that yourself. Is... Yeah, so. Right, and now you're, you're becoming your own antagonist. I don't know. Oh my so, god. I thought it was oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. If you guys haven't played that, I definitely recommend playing it. What, what? the mod or the original? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's oh, not too long. I definitely think it's like way better. That's what you're already is, is that the bad guy you're talking about? Yeah, the one with the wits. Dude, that He's is like disturbing. That's, that is, that's like really good though. Cause like enough, like enough of him, enough of him is hidden, and the other part has a lot going on aesthetically. So your brain's trying to like figure out the pattern, and at the same time, you can't see the other part. So it just kind of makes him scarier without even doing anything. Which is just like that's just I haven't played this game before, so like this is completely new to me, and that is legit. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, horrifying. One thing that I thought Majora's Mask did really amazingly well is that it made things that were really disturbing and scary without fangs, yeah. without blood, without like mucus or really drippy stuff, with, and with lots of bright colors. Like everything yeah. wasn't just black. That's that's one of the so, things is like, I, I really don't like a lot of the colors that are used in Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, but it's weird that they can like, like Majora's Mask has the weirdest bright colors on it, yeah, like they, and they're just so conflicting. You're just like, what? But it's still pretty terrifying. Yeah, so it's amazing how they make things creepy without any kind of the normal things that are supposed to like be a shortcut to tell people this is supposed to be creepy. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. And well, hey, they did. They did some of them. Small children, creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, making weird noises, giggle, weird yeah. giggles that don't. Yeah. Happy mass yeah. self yeah. giggling, so creepy. Sure. Yeah. And all the kids being small, happy mask salesmen, creepier. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. All right. So that was long. Yeah. Why are you clapping for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like trying to parse what we're going to do. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> clapping is fun, and I don't always get an excuse to do it in the public. <laughs> Secret, and then we're also trying to keep the game secret from the judges, and that's just not gonna work. <laughs> well, and to be fair, I just think I'm probably the only person working on a 3D game, so it'd be no, pretty no, good. <laughs> nobody at like Game Dev Club kind of <laughs> talk about any game development. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you making? I'm making uh, a game that is. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so the idea is uh, it's you're in a 
house somewhere, and you have to navigate through like traps and stuff to escape. Cool. And cool. it's in 3D? Yeah. What are you making it in? Uh, Unity. Cool. And I'm using like free assets people have put up online that are royalty free. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Start I've started playing my game. Um, it is a board game with um, different colors. There's four different colors. As you go around the board, whatever color you land on, you pick up that color card. Each color has like a different theme, and there's going to be ones where it's like you get candy for that, you move back three spaces, and things like that. Um, I haven't actually started building it yet, but I've got it for the most part. Anybody else working on it? I think I'm making a board game. I don't know. I think it would be really, really cool, but Tyler's working on his own game. It's to have like 3D models to print on the 3D printer and use those as board game pieces. <laughs> yeah, and it'll be so sweet. So cool. But that's not happening. <laughs> one day. One day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you show up with a bunch of like, like. Uh, dozens of 3D printed cubes. <laughs> That's all I knew how to make. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very cute. Oh, hey, for a game jam, you know what would be really cool? If people didn't have to make a video game. But it has a game jam's about the game developers conference. Is it? What? No, our game jam. What? Wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, game uh, jam. The club itself hosts its own game jam. Um, periodically. Yeah, yeah, what are you on game jam? Sure. I mean, like, yeah, if somebody I guess you could. But I mean, like, like if nobody knows how to, if somebody doesn't know how to program. I guess that's true. Then they have to learn it, you know yeah. what I mean? And It's it's weird and, because the adventurous yeah. part of the game jam is the fact that making a video game is so hard. Yeah. There's also the fact that you're teaming up with other people. That's true. I'm sure if somebody so really wanted to make more games, we wouldn't stop them. Yeah. 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 So we just go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to have something really like difficult in your base off. Maybe don't just make Yeah, I would too. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would really hope that they make something like uh, like if you've ever played a game like Mortal Attack or something, where it's like you have to make some centerpiece thing that has mechanical parts in it. <laughs> That'd be really cool. To build it. So we could get someone to do that. Yeah. The workshop is fire and You guys are going to have a game jam next semester, right? Yep. That's why I'm next semester. I don't know if I can make this semester or not because we're just going to Desert Code Camp. Yeah, we I don't know if I'm required to go to that one. Oh, it does conflict? It does conflict. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's on the it's same the weekend. Night. Yeah. Oh, you could go on Friday. Then go to the code camp on Saturday, and then come back on Sunday. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> My team isn't going to be very happy with that. Yeah. So. I'll let you make a point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, <laughs> sorry, Kate, I'm sick. Yeah. Bad color. Let's go make a game. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of the point of this, is that they wanted it to be like really natural, and they wanted things to blend together. Um, so a lot of the color schemes are kind of like hard to Apart. Yeah. But the name of the game, you should just look at it and see the name and be able to right. read it. I didn't know there was any text there. I just thought it was easy. I agree. Yeah, that's all I said. I thought, why are there easy to straddle between the trees? And then you're like, oh, it says shelter. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, oh, there's a Okay, I see you. Yeah. Just made it New game. Go, Dylan, go. Show us your lead speed run skill. You got to move. Can't do this without a mouse. Speed read. Speed read. Shelter tool. Assisted speed run. Shelter tool. Assisted speed run. Are you the leader? Intentionally takes damage to save time. Are you not there for the. Oh, work. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. 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 See, my, my idea would be like, <laughs> for, for the sake of the gene pool, if they can't run for themselves pretty well, you know, I'm not going to go out of my way. Alright, so you're there, Darwin. No attempt to escape. It's cool, though. Can you sacrifice one of your children to eat if you can't find food? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. There's plenty of food. <laughs> if you're not feeding you your that? kids, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Feed them each other. Oh, uh, so I, I noticed that 
every single one of your children has a very distinct yeah. pattern, so like you know which yeah. one you lost. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, so that, that I mean, that seems really clearly designed to give some impact. Stripes, no. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, <laughs> the, yeah all, all of the, all the badgers in one litter do not look that different. So that was, and you're like that was really hoping that the fat one isn't getting why? Because he's cute. He's the one you fed the most food to. Oh, oh, it's it's an investment. investment. <laughs> yeah. You need one that's slower than the rest of them. Why don't you just stay here? here? I think they would starve. Well, yeah. So that, that, that one, one that I just fed, I think, was starving until I found food. Yeah, he was blue, wasn't when he? When you start yeah, a new game, do you right. start with one of them? Start. You start out as yeah, so you can probably teach the player how to feed. The game is about redemption. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I spent the first like thirty minutes of this game just grinning like crazy because you're just a badger. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> He's like flopping around. It's so great. And my kids, my kids are fine. But badger adventure. <laughs> they'll they'll figure it out. Probably when you. Like when you do that, they all yell too. Oh, there they go. Looking. Let's see if I can find something new before meeting over. You try not to <laughs> ruin your children. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so clean. Should think of how to run free. Yeah, it's, it's definitely <laughs> very natural looking. Well, they're clearly trying really to cool. catch up, but you're just like, no. Yeah, we'll get a red sheet and get the looks quite like this. Especially considering, like, it's got then so few, like, uh, polygons. Where's the frog? Where's the frog? Oh, run with it. Where is it? No, I don't see it. Of course. Yeah, there's one of these. Jump in the water. These ones. Ah. There it is. Get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can, like, get rid of the boxes and stuff. Badgers are pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> you should be getting top. It's like 10 bucks. I wouldn't say it's worth 10. But it's pretty good. It's interesting about there's some things on Discord. It's worth 10 just to bark when you have to get bark back to you. I don't know how to say the news. Ah, it was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, one <laughs> no, it's definitely seriously horrifying whenever you do a No. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> 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 pretty much done.